Pastors Chooks and Toyino Goye. Pastors Chooks and Toyino Goye are the lead pastors of Resurrection Life Church, Johannesburg, South Africa. They are passionate about building families and raising men and women who transform and uplift the standard of life in their communities through understanding and applying biblical principles. Pastor Chooks and Pastor Toyin frequently host workshops, seminars and conferences for transformation. Some of their programs include Kingdom Financiers Conferences, Dream Achievers Conferences, Marriage Enrichment Courses and Seminars, For Wives Only Seminars, Single Ladies Boot Camps and Limitless Men Seminars. They are the founders of the Power of Women Academy, a group mentorship for high-impact women, and host the annual Power of Women Conferences and Amazing Power of Women Broadcasts. For more information, please visit www.idelight.co.za and www.reslife.org.za or WhatsApp plus 27814210835. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to another amazing Power of Woman broadcast. It's our Thursday gathering, our Thursday broadcast on the amazing Power of Woman, where we speak to the spirit, the soul, and the body of a woman, where we minister along those lines. My name is Toyin Ugohe, Pastor Toyin Ugohe. And with me, Pastor, and, and alongside Pastor Chick Sobina Ugohe, will be your host for today. And we are just continuing on the series we have started talking about the women in the Bible. So we are continuing with that. We've gone through um, our mother, Sarah, and now we are talking about Eve. We just want to be able to learn lessons from her life. What did she do well? that we can pick up as women and just continue with that. And what did she not do so well that we need to avoid, which we are vulnerable to, and which we need to avoid? As we always mention, this broadcast is born out of this book, The Amazing Power of Woman book. And this broadcast just seeks to be able to exp um, take further the things that are being taught, that, that were taught in this book, and also further revelation about the power of woman. God has bestowed upon us so much power, and we need to understand what it is. We need to harness it, and we need to deploy it for the glory of God and for just the fulfillment that he has desired for each one of us. And so without taking too much of your time, we will go for a short ad break, and afterwards we will have Pastor Chick Sobina will go ahead to come and take us further on the topic, the women of the Bible, talking about Eve. Amen. Thank you. Have a beautiful one with us today. Amen. Why are you still single? Do you feel you're not ready yet? Do you say it's not my time yet? Have you made mistakes in the past and now you're stuck in a complicated situation? Or perhaps you've given up totally on the idea of marriage? Why not join Pastor Chuk Sogoye, author of The Amazing Power of Woman book, and his wife, Pastor Toyin, the founders of the Power of Woman Academy, at the next Single Ladies Boot Camp to explore and answer your questions. A big miracle could be waiting for you. For more information, visit www.slbc.co.za or WhatsApp 081-421-0835. Well, thank you, dear wife. Thank you. Thank you um, for all the ladies out there. And if there is any man watching us tonight, welcome. We are on for another beautiful time on the Amazing Power Woman broadcast. Uh, we are doing a series we called uh, The Women of the Bible. We've done the first character, which was our mother, Sarah. And now we are doing Eve. We, I think this is part two of Eve. We, we did part one um, last week, and today we are going to learn a few more things about Eve. The, the whole idea of this series is to look into the characters of the women in the Bible and learn what to do or what not to do, how to use the amazing power that God has put inside women, how to use it well, uh, how to safeguard it, how to make sure that it's not hijacked, uh, because that's what the enemy wants, that's what the devil wants, to hijack it, and we say no. So, so God has allowed us to glean revelation from his word, and uh, some of this stuff are already, you know, documented in this book. The amazing power that he put in woman. You know, it's so, it's so interesting that 
In the Garden of Eden, so we, we already started, right? Let's roll. In the Garden of Eden, man was made before woman. The male man came into the garden before woman. Um, it would seem to me that the, the enemy also uh, was in the garden before the woman. Be because the enemy overheard what God said and deliberately chose to twist it. All right. But in the garden, the woman was the last person to come into the garden. Yet, when the enemy was targeting to attack humanity, to attack the first couple, that he did not go for Adam. He went for Eve. Why did he go to Eve? Why did he launch his attack on Eve? Why would, did he throw his first punch at Eve? Because of the amazing power of woman. She, he understood that woman has power. And that power, if I want to get the man, all I need to do is hit the woman, let her use her power. And she would rope down the man. And that's exactly what happened. So we, it's important that we, we understand that power. Woman, you are powerful. You are so powerful. It's important that you understand the power that you have and how to protect that power, how to deploy that power, how to make sure that that power is used for the purposes for which God gave it to you. God gave that power to woman for a reason. But the enemy knew that mm, if I can hit this woman, I can get her to use that power she has against the purposes of God and I will get what I'm looking for. The devil has always been a power-hungry spirit. He was power-hungry in heaven. That was why he was cast down. And then when he came to the earth, he saw that power has been given to Adam. But he realized that the only way to take that power from Adam is to go through the power that God has given to the woman. And he used the woman to to launch an assault on Adam and you know we know the rest is history so we want to see the mistakes that Eve made so some things that Eve, if Eve knew it she would not have um, be, been a victim of, of, of Satan's slyness and Satan's deception she wouldn't have been a victim in other words if she knew a few things about her power she would have been able to use her power wisely to protect the dominion mandate. One of the things that God gave you power as a woman for is to protect the mandates that he has put upon your man. Your power has been given to you to protect that mandate. So, so what happened here was the enemy went to the woman and, <laughs> and you know, threw a cough ball to her and then she, she got deceived and that power worked against uh, 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 herself and her husband. All right, so we have we had done three points already, you know, as we examined the life of Eve to see the things that she did wrong. We, we, we said, number one, Eve did not have, a, have an accurate knowledge of God's word. And the devil suspected that and threw a curveball at her and got her. Number two, Satan urged her to focus and feed her attention on what God said to avoid. So Satan made her focus on what she's supposed to not focus on. So what she's supposed to avoid, Satan made her focus on it. And that was one of the ways that he hijacked her power. Now number three was that she tolerated Satan's suggestions instead of rebuking him. So when Satan started speaking to her, and she could hear the voice of the enemy, she should have known that nothing, nothing right, nothing truth, truth does not come out of the enemy. It's all deception, it's all lies. That's when she should have rebuked that animal. Why? Because she had dominion. She and her husband had dominion. So they could have used their dominion and rebuked that devil and command that devil to, to, to leave because the devil had taken over a, a, a creature in the garden which is not supposed to happen 
So they, sh they should have rebuked that devil. Say, come out of that snake. Don't, don't do that. And, you know, and, and they would have, you know, sustained their flow of harmony and their flow of equilibrium and their flow of dominion. But, you know, they didn't, she, they didn't do that. So she, she allowed the enemy to talk to her. And by talking to her, the enemy deceived her and confused her and got her to sin. All right, so let's do number four. Uh, I'm going to try and do um, three or four tonight. Uh, number four, she changed God's word. She added and subtracted from God's word. She changed God's word. Woman of God, if you are going to use the power that God has put inside of you, one of the keys to effectively using your power wisely is to know the word of God. Is to, is to be grounded in truth. Is to be grounded in sound doctrine. If you don't know the word of God, you will abuse your power. If you don't know the word of God, you will, the enemy will hijack the power that God has given to you and use it to destroy people around you. This is so powerful. You need to know the word of God. You know, women of God, if the amazing power that God has put inside of you is going to be used for God's glory, it will be because you are well taught in the word of God. You are well grounded in the word of God. You are well, well, well versed in the word of God. Eve was not well versed in the word of God. And that power that she had was used against her. The enemy used that power and got them to lose the dominion they had, lose their mandate, lose their home, lose the, para, you know, the, the Garden of Eden, that paradise-like look, uh, paradise -like looking place. They lost it because she was not well versed in the word of God. You know, God said, you shall, not, you shall, you shall freely eat. All the trees that are in the garden except this one. When she was repeating what God said, she said, God said you shall eat. She, did, she, she left out freely eat. And then the, the one that God said you should not eat, she added, she added, and do not, you should not touch it. God never said you should not touch it. God said you should not eat it. But she added to the word of God. So she added and she subtracted from the word of God. Because she was not very convinced of what God said. And that's a problem. See, if you don't know what the Bible teaches about, you know, things, the enemy will hijack your power. L let me give you an example. The issue of modesty. If you don't understand the Bible and understand the word of God on the issue of modesty, you will not be able to know what is modest and what is immodest. You see, because for us to define modesty, we have to bring several scriptures and apply it. Because there's no one definition of modesty. You see what I'm saying? There are many scriptures that we're going to use at any point in time to determine what is modest and what is immodest. But if you don't know those scriptures that create those parameters, you will fumble when it comes to the area of modesty. And modesty is so important to manage your power. Modesty is so critical to manage your power. One of the powers that God is giving to the woman is the power to stimulate. The power to stimulate. But you are only supposed to stimulate your husband to pull seed out of him. See, seed cannot come out of him except you stimulate him. So that power to stimulate, you have it. But you got to manage that power with modesty so that you're not out stimulating every single man on the street. So that's where modesty comes in. But you see, to be able to define the boundaries of modesty, you need to know the Bible. You need to know the word of God. You need to know scriptures that say all things are lawful, but not all things are defined. You need to know what the Bible says concerning, you know, I can eat meat, but if my brother will fall because of my eating meat, I must not eat meat. I, you need to understand those scriptures. They, you need to understand scriptures that say the love of God constrains me. You need to, yeah, so, so these are scriptures that you need to understand and then apply them to be able to define what is modest in my, in my outlook, in my dressing, in my comportment, in my behavior. What is modest and what is immodest? You see? So if you don't know the word of God, you will not be able to put boundaries around the issue of modesty and be able to 
package your power well. Because without modesty, your power will be abused. Your power to stimulate, for instance, will be abused if you don't understand modesty. So, if you are going to uh, draw a lesson from Eve right here, uh, what that lesson is, be grounded in the word. Be, don't be flaky. Don't be, don't be flaky. Be grounded in the word. Be well taught in the word. What it simply says to me is that any woman of God, any woman that wants to truly serve God and fulfill the will of God for her life, for her, for her husband, for her family, is, must be a serious student of the word of God. Not a casual student. A serious student of the word of God. A serious student of the word of God. You will need to go to Bible school. You need to engage in rigorous Bible study. For so that you are well grounded and well established in truth. So that your power is not hijacked and abused. All right. Let me go to the next one. Number five. Number five. All right. So number five from the last time or number two for today. Number five and number two. If you want to uh, reference it from the first episode. So it will be number five point. She believed the devil more than she believed God. Thus, she got deceived and she doubted the goodness of God. You know, it, it, it came to a point where it was the Satan's word against God's word. God said this. Satan comes and says something different. And she chose to believe the devil. She chose to believe the devil. How many times do you fall into this trap of believing the devil? See, do you know that if you are not established in love, let me, let me, let me, let me, you know, say it very slowly. If you are not established in love, you will fall into the trap of believing the devil on issues, on matters. You will fall into the trap of believing the devil more than you believe God, more than you believe the word. If you are not established in love. Do you know that the Bible says that love covers a multitude of faults a multitude of offenses a multitude of faults god love covers it love believes the best so when you're matured in love you are able to believe the best about somebody you're able to believe the best about them and act on that even when whatever they are doing is is you know um is subpar it's below standard you believe the best that's what it means to walk in love you believe the best about somebody and you know, if you, if you can't believe the best about somebody, Satan will always, you know, come to you to tell you things about this person, to tell you things about your husband or about your child, about your mother, about your mother-in-law, about your sister-in-law, about your, you know, because you are not established in love. Because you're not grounded in love. So you are now open to, you know, uh, uh, every wind of, of suggestion. And you are being turned you know, left and right, to and fro, up and down, because you're not grounded in love. But when you're grounded in love, you, you can hold on to the truths of God's word concerning this person by faith and trust God that your faith will prevail and this person will come right. So, the enemy got he, she, her to believe, to believe him more than believe God. So, so how do we apply this? You know, the Bible says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for what? Righteousness. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Uh, so, so when Eve doubted God, of course, that's sin. If believing God produces righteousness, that means doubting God produces sin. I want you to know this. If you are, if you are superficial, or not well grounded, or your your approach to the word of God is casual, you know, or it's inconsistent. You are a candidate for the enemy to flog, for the enemy to hijack your power and use it against you. Now, this is the thing, woman of God, hear, hear what I'm about to say. Every time your power is abused, you suffer the consequences of it. Every time. 
your power is abused. You allow the, your, the enemy to steal your power, to hijack your power and abuse it. You suffer the consequences of it. Look at what happened to, to Adam and Eve. They lost their home. They lost their home. They lost their dominion. They lost their power. They lost their connection with God. They did. They lost it. Fear came in. Hiding came in. Hunger came in. And before we knew what was happening, murder entered their family. A brother killed the other brother. Cain killed his brother Abel. And can you imagine the mother having to deal with the death of her child and it was the older brother that killed the younger brother? Do you, do you think that Eve was going to be a happy woman knowing that one of her sons killed the other son? So, so there was now murder in their family by a family member. Can you imagine all the pain and all the stuff that, that followed? So it's not worth it. The time you invest to grow in the word of God is everything. The time you invest to know God is everything. That's what I'm saying to you today. You need to become more serious about studying God's word and learning the truth of God's word. Reading your Bible for yourself. Searching for the truth. If there are Bible school, join a Bible school. Join a Bible reading program. You know, enlist in some online course to know the word of God, to know the Bible. It will safeguard your life. It will safeguard your life. You cannot afford to value the words of the enemy above the word of God because it will hurt you. All right, let me give you another one. She wrongly believed that the end justified the means. Eve's attitude, you know, when she, she took that fruit to eat, well, suggested that she believed that it did not matter uh, to disobey God since she would end up becoming like God. So it didn't matter, you know. And that's what the enemy wanted her to believe. That it doesn't matter, you know, to disobey God. If you can become like God, the, the, the end will justify the means. No. The end does not justify the means in the things of God. The end and the means must be congruent. The end and the means must be congruent. You cannot use the principles of the devil to arrive at, at the destination of God. Mm -mm. You cannot use the root of the devil to arrive at the destination of God. No way. It doesn't work. So, so you, can't, you can't build the kingdom of God with the principles of the devil. You cannot build the kingdom of God with the principles of the devil. It doesn't work. Once you begin to use the principles of the devil, it, the kingdom project is, 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 is uh, grounded. It doesn't, it doesn't grow. It doesn't move. The, kin, the principles of the devil can never build the kingdom of God. So, so the end does not justify the means. You've you got to be very careful don't, not to allow the enemy make you think that the end justifies the means. And a lot of people think that way. No. What matters is that uh, I, I can show the, the blessing of God, the blessing in quotes. I can show the blessing of God. It doesn't matter what I did to get it. Oh, I can come out in church and testify. Uh, the Lord has blessed me with this car. But you know that you had to sleep with one, two, three, four, five, six to be able to get that car. Uh, you're, you're, oh, the Lord has given me a promotion at work. But you had to sleep with the boss in order to get that promotion. No, God is not glorified by that. That promotion did not come from God. It came by the deployment of the principles of the enemy. He cannot glorify God. So, so the end does not justify the means. And every time you, you submit to the lie that the end justifies the means, you defile yourself. You defile yourself. You hurt yourself. And that's what happened to Eve. She hurt herself. The enemy hijacked her power, and before you knew it, they were powerless. <laughs> they were powerless. She and her husband were powerless. They were now afraid. They were now hiding. That dominion was gone. That protection was gone. Their covering was gone. And, and it was gone until Jesus came. The whole of humanity was now empty and naked. It became a planet of orphans because they didn't have God as, as their father anymore. You know, the fatherhood of God could not extend to them the way that the father would want to extend to them because the, she wrongly believed that the end justifies the means. The end never justifies the means. Never. Never. So, so you can't disobey God to get a promotion that Satan promised you. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Satan promises you a promotion and then you disobey God to get it and, and think God will be glorified. No, God is not glorified by it. Nothing. 
No, 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 not at all. So nothing good or permanent can come out of disobedience. Nothing good or permanent can come out of disobedience. You know, sin always has consequences. And that's the thing that I, I want to drum in. Sin always has consequences. And you must watch out. Sin always has consequences. I do know that the blood of Jesus cleanses us and forgives us. But sin has consequences. So, so you, you, you don't let the devil make you think that, oh, I, I can do it. God will forgive me. There won't be a problem. That's not true. That's deception. There will be a problem. Sin has consequences. And the consequences are not coming from God. The sin itself is what is, is punishing you. All right, let me take the last one and I'm, I'm done for tonight. She erroneously believed that if more people did wrong, the wrong thing, then it can become right. <laughs> she erroneously believed it. That if more people did the wrong thing, then it can become right. That's why she went and offered the fruit to her husband. If I can bring him to eat it, then it will be right. <laughs> more, more people doing wrong, want something wrong doesn't make it right. You know, that the whole world is doing it doesn't make it right. You know, this, somebody says, but everybody's doing it. If everybody's doing it, doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it approved by God. It doesn't make it acceptable by God. That the whole nation can, can go the way of, of perdition doesn't make it right. God can never sanction what is, you know, because it's popular, it make it right. Popularity does not score points with God. <laughs> popularity does not score points with God. Popularity only scores points in democracy. And remember that democracy is not a, is not a paradigm of heaven. Theocracy is the paradigm of heaven. So, so that more people are doing wrong does not make move God to now approve of something. You know, the whole world is going gagas about so many things right now. Doesn't mean it's going to be right. If God said it's wrong, it's wrong. So that 99.99% that of the world is doing it would not make it right. So, so be careful, beware of that lie of the enemy to say, but everybody's doing it. If it can't be so bad. If everybody's doing it, it can't be so bad. No, if it's bad, it's bad. And God can never be glorified by what is bad. So I want you to um, take, take this uh, uh, little that I have shared and um, chew on it. Listen to this teaching again and again. Chew on it. And uh, we'll continue next week uh, on the women of the Bible. I hope you got something tonight. Ruminate on it. I'll see you next week. God bless you. Good night. Why are you still single? Do you feel you're not ready yet? Do you say it's not my time yet? Have you made mistakes in the past and now you're stuck in a complicated situation? Or perhaps you've given up totally on the idea of marriage? Why not join Pastor Chukso Goye, author of The Amazing Power of Woman book, and his wife, Pastor Toyin, the founders of the Power of Woman Academy, at the next Single Ladies Boot Camp to explore and answer your questions. A big miracle could be waiting for you. For more information, visit www.slbc.co.za or WhatsApp 081-421-0835.